My next guest died on the operating table, went to heaven, and came back, but with a serious problem. He had total amnesia. Well, God did a miracle, and he doesn't have amnesia today, but he does have a problem with his short-term memory. And the, you may say, well, Sid, why are you going to interview him? Because he came back with another gift. He has the gift of x-ray vision. He can look inside of someone, know what's wrong with them, know what the problem is, and literally see the problem corrected. He can look into the room and he can see angels. Sid Roth here with Rod and Glenda Petty, and I, I, I protest again, I know I've done it all, often, but I protest, and I'm entitled in my show, I protest, Ron, you have a gift to see in the invisible world, you have a gift to see inside of people, to pray for them, and last night I asked you to look inside of me and you saw what was going on and you prayed and I believe and you believe that I was healed. Um, you also can look in a room and you can see what's going on. I mean, to me, there's no guesswork there. I like it that way. I, I, I guess I have to have more faith than you. There's n no faith involved. It's, it's a fact. <laughs> I mean, I don't understand it. I have never have understood it. I never will because it's God who is doing it. And you can't understand God. Uh, Glenda, you said sometimes when this gift first started, he, he would say to you, a room is very crowded. What was going on when he said that? He just sees so many angels. He sees everyone's guardian angel. And even in this room now, as we are here in the studio, he sees a, a very crowded. So room. if there are 50 people, he could see 100 people. Is that, is that right? That's correct. That's right. And I think he sees them just as real as he's seeing you and I. They're not shadowy or ethereal. They're just real. And it's amazing. I, I do not grasp how he, right. let, clearly let, he's seeing let it. Let me take you back uh, and tell me a bit about his disease that he had, or uh, it actually isn't a disease, uh, what is it? He had a head, head injury back in the Vietnam War in, on the Navy ship. And years later, he continued to have headaches. And then one year, uh, the headaches were so increased that he was passing out from the pain. So we had CAT scans, we had second and third opinions, and when they began to c compare the CAT scans, they found that spinal fluid was not draining so they not draining enough mm -hmm. and it was very critical so they put in a shunt I say they the neurosurgeons uh, put in a, a shunt that that drained spinal fluid and then as time passed the shunt had to have corrections sure. it would malfunction we were back in and out of the hospital with many emergencies and then uh, about three years into this the entire shunt had to be replaced it had developed an infection well, in the replacement process, they had put inadvertently and accidentally put the brand new tubing that would drain spinal fluid right into a massive blood clot that had not shown up on x-ray. So the doctor- So it wouldn't work. Would not work. They would not really discover this for hours and even a couple of days later of what a critical mistake had been made. So on a Sunday morning, they rushed him back into surgery. And that was the morning that he truly died on the operating table. Uh, Ron, when you died on the table, uh, what, what memory do you have of what happened when you left your body? The memory was heaven, and I knew exactly where I was. You mean you like instantly, instantly. left your body and you were in heaven? Yeah, there was no in-between, it was instantly. And I knew where I was. That was an amazing thing. What were the first things that you saw? Well. One thing, there was light everywhere. I mean, it's like walking into a, a well-lit auditorium. Light everywhere, and I walked up to this table. That was, I'm calling it a table because no better term. Mm -hmm. I walked up to this table and asked the person, I'm ready to go in. And I wasn't, there's a big book on this table. It was looked at the book, my name wasn't there. Oh no. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs>
I said, have I been mis deceived all these years? And it came about that I raised such a ruckus. Now, this is hard to believe. A ruckus with an angel in heaven. <laughs> well, I, listen, I would have raised a ruckus too. How about you? You would have raised a ruckus too. He, he can't get into heaven. Would you like to find out why? <laughs> I know you do. Don't go away, but I'll tell you, his book, Heaven, is real. The presence of God is so strong. When I read this book, it's a book, it's one of these books you literally cannot put down. People that are afraid of death after they finish this book, they no longer have fear of death. People that have lost loved ones after they read this book. I mean, uh, Ron and Glenda, what happened to you and what, Ron, you experienced in heaven takes away all worry about loved ones in heaven. We'll be right back after this word and find out why Ron was not allowed into heaven. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Hello, YouTube Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Ron and Glenda Petty, and Ron dies on the operating table. He's instantly in heaven. There's a registration uh, desk. An angel looks through the books. His name is not there. He causes, as he says, a ruckus. I don't blame him. I would cause a ruckus too. Uh, but uh, Ron, there were people on earth that were praying for you. Tell me about that. There was a, a lot of what I'm calling confusion in heaven. I had it thought of as a quiet, serene, beautiful place. And I, when, I, when I got there, there's a lot of noise, like walking into a large auditorium at one time. I had a large auditorium hearing everybody talk at one time. And I didn't understand what it was. And the person behind this desk, it wasn't, well, behind this desk, asked me, I think you asked them, what is all this noise? Yeah. And this person behind the desk says, don't you know? I said, no, I don't. Tell me what it is. These were all intercessory prayers coming up on my behalf. So all the noise that you were hearing were people praying for you yes. to not die. <laughs> yeah, right. really. In, in disbelief, I said, you got to be kidding me. I don't know this many people. <laughs> and the person behind the desk said, would you like to hear one? A prayer was drawn out. It went, it was, I was drawn to it, basically. And I heard every word that man was praying. And it was verified because I think two Sundays before, they had started recording their messages and it was all on tape. And so when you heard it, it was word for word. What, uh, actually, as I understand it from the book, you said the prayer and then you listened to it? Is that exactly. what happened, Glenda? Exactly. That's exactly, exactly what happened. Um, so Mabry said, Mabry Kane, our friend, said, well, we prayed for you a lot of times. I don't remember a particular time. So Ron explained again, said the prayer, quoted him ex the exact phrase, which was in a unique phrase. And then they found the tape and it matched exactly. Now, you, you had so many wonderful experiences in heaven. One had to do with, you had a stillborn baby. Tell me about that. Um, I'll, I'll let, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Ron relives his testimony, his story, every time we are asked to share it. And that's a very difficult part. He heard children's voices and one child's voice was drawn out above the others. And he tried to walk near to this barrier. We could not pass through. He could not see the children. He could hear them playing as if playing in water, a stream. And they sounded very happy. But he, he immediately knew that voice drawn out was our son, Jason. And as you walk toward the wall or the barrier, 
this very large authoritative <laughs> angel stood stood in my way, put my, his hand over my face. It was a large hand because it covered my entire face. He said, he's fine, he's taken care of, now move back. And I did. I moved back to the table where my name wasn't in the book. I move back to that table. And Glenda, the thing is a story that this just an overwhelming story about uh, the children in right. heaven. Right. The next scene Ron was aware of were many thousands of people walking in the same direction as a corridor of people. And Ron looked ahead to see where were they going. And Jesus was there seeming to receive them. But the majority of the people were children, children of all sizes and ages, with adults sprinkled throughout, through the crowd. But you also saw children carrying something in their hands. And what these children were carrying were other children. And what I saw was not other children. I saw a miniature adult mm -hmm. in their hands. What these children would have come out, you know, become if they had not been aborted or are still died, born. Are still or born. Ron, you made eye contact with a young man in heaven. Tell me about that. It was very significant. This young man, almost in a mischievous way, said, I made it, I made it, I made it. And and you didn't. And I, I As he was walking along in the yeah, crowd, and he, he made eye contact. He walked up to the Lord. Now, the Lord was there. He passed through the Lord into heaven. And I just, it, the Bible just came alive because I said the only way to enter heaven is to enter through Jesus Christ himself. That's the only way. And the Lord, what did the Lord tell you about this young man? He said. Two words. To two you words. Only. Remember this. I thought I was supposed to remember that young man, and I would never forget him. I still don't to this day. And this was, but there was a reason that Jesus said that, and it's so amazing. And don't go away. We'll be right back after this word. We'll be right back to it's supernatural. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Ron and Glenda Petty. And Ron died on the operating table, went to heaven, and his experiences bring such comfort to people that never had comfort before in reference to dying. Because it's a trip that everyone has to make, but there are a lot of questions about heaven. And this book, Heaven is Real, will do exactly what the title says. It'll make heaven real. And so Ron and Glenda, uh, Ron was in heaven. He sees a young man. Jesus says to remember him. And then many years later, you're at a Bible study, Glenda, and what happened? Several years later, we were at a Bible study. And there were two couples that had to travel an hour away to lead this particular study. They were bringing a video they had experience, and they were coming from another church. And during the course of this, they asked us to pray for a young man in their church who was dying with kidney failure. And so week to week, they said, would you please pray for Scotty Hennigan? And then when week came, and they said, well, we had Scotty's funeral this week. No need to pray for him anymore. And they said it in such a joyful way, we all just were taken back. Well, this is not good, but they were seemed happy. Well, they said, you should see the difference in his mother. She gave him to the Lord. Uh, Scotty was ready to go. He was a brilliant Christian to start with. At any rate, we want Carolyn to come meet you, to come meet our group. Several weeks later, Carolyn Hennigan came. And after the meeting, Ron went over to her and you said, I don't know why I ask, but uh, did you bring a picture of Scotty? And Carolyn said, well, I normally don't carry a picture with me, but I went back into the house tonight to bring this. And she reached down into a large bag and pulled out a framed 8 by 10 of Scotty and showed Ron. 
And the next thing I knew, and Ron dropped to his knees in front of her, just collapsed, and said, that's the young man I saw entering heaven. You, you had no doubt whatsoever it was him. And the picture she pulled out was a recent picture of him. He did not look ill in this picture. In the picture, he is 21 years old, just as Ron saw him entering. And she was not surprised that her son was in heaven, but it was such a comfort and a delight to know that someone witnessed it. Uh, that, that is such a wonderful story to verify your experience in heaven. But there, when you talk about the eyes of Jesus, I just, I, I can't get enough of that. Will you tell me about the eyes of Jesus, Ron? The eyes of Jesus are so loving. Is you can't, you can't describe them because in his eyes you can see the future and you can see the beginning. His eyes were, were totally magnified, uplifted. Uh, I don't know. His eyes were just, they, were, they had everything, the present to the future. And you've often yeah. said they were like a dark, transparent blue. Yeah. And something else you seemed to, in that moment that you made eye contact with him, or he did with you, you knew that he could, he knew everything about you. Yeah, you, you didn't walk up to Jesus and try to hide things from him because it's almost like he knew when you walked up to him that he knew everything. He knew every detail of your life and yet there was no judgment in his eyes, no yeah. condemnation. No judgment, but love. But love, complete I mean, love. Complete love. You also saw a sadness, a, a joy and a sadness in his And eyes. this is very unusual because the sadness, I think, that I saw in the Lord's eyes were the people that were not accepting him as, his, as their Lord and Savior. Well, you would, the Bible says that God is pure love, so you, this is what you, uh, I mean, it, that's, this is logical to me, but you know something that intrigues me immensely, I said at the beginning of the program, is when you came back, you had amnesia, then 10 years later, the amnesia just suddenly left. Uh, you, you still have a problem with the memory, but it's like God uses the, the foolish things of this earth to confound the wisdom. I don't think God would trust you with the gift I'm about ready to mention if you didn't have the, these limitations you're walking through. I, that's what I think anyway. It's hallelujah. I mean, you're, you're, probably, you're right. Because I don't think he could trust me. But because I, I'm too... <laughs> oh, I, I'm too innocent. <laughs> too innocent. <laughs> I mean, what other words can they say? Can uh, you say? No, I, I understand. Tell me about Deuce. Okay. Okay. Glad, glad to tell you. <laughs> Deuce it was a little child we met when he was 14 months old. He was born without an immune system. And we connected with this family. It was just... a wonderful connection. And so then Stephanie, the mom, would call us often uh, to, to just call for prayer. And most of this was long distance on the phone. Either she was calling from her home 20 miles away or from the medical center in a town two hours away. So Stephanie would call. Well, one day she was at home. Deuce had spiked a high fever. And this would, in mere, in mere minutes, they would need to take action. They would need to get to an emergency room, probably life flight him back to the main hospital. Well, so she called and Ron was there by himself that day and the phone call came. And so he said, now Stephanie, we can do this. Let's just, let's just pray for Deuce, put your hand on his forehead and let's just pray. And in moments, his fever uh, left. He rested peacefully. The next day he had blood work done. Prior to this, he had had two failed bone marrow transplants where his mother, Stephanie, was the donor. He should have had his mother's blood type, but never had. 
that next day when they tested the blood, it, he had her blood type. They tested it twice at one hospital, thinking it was a mistake. So his blood type literally changed. Changed. It changed. It was uh, one step in many, miraculous, just a stream of miracles, we've said, with this child of the healing. As I said, he was born without an immune system. Now he's nine years old, and the doctors have declared him a normal child. So it would be almost like years ago they used to call it a, a, a child they'd put in a bubble a because bubble. they were afraid of getting disease. That is exactly right. Right. He, he had lived most of his life in the hospital. In fact. Ron, I am so intrigued by your gift of being able to see in the invisible world. Uh, did, did you see anything in this studio? This studio is, was filled with angels, not just garden angels but angels on a, I'm calling it angels on assignment. Mm -hmm. They were, they're all over, they're all over. It's, I can't understand it, I don't understand it. It's just, hallelujah, because I can act like a fool <laughs> and these angels can take care of it. Now, when you look inside of someone, like you, last night you looked inside of me, uh, do you actually see like, uh, the organs or what types of things do I you do. see? God has given me the gift of healing. And with this gift comes, you know, many and numerous other things. But with this, it's progressed to where I can see inside a person what is wrong. And people will come to me for prayer many times and they'll, they'll give me all their what's wrong with them. And, I'll, and the Lord will highlight a certain spot on their body. And I'll just say, what about your liver? Or what about your stomach? You know, they came for a headache. Mm -hmm. Because they weren't going to tell me about their stomach or their... Well, you know, you can see things wrong that are physical. That's and right. God heals the person. But God can see things that are spiritual. Every sin inside of you is preventing you from experiencing the fullness of God. And if you will repent of your sins, believe the blood of Jesus, wash them away, and ask Jesus to become real and live inside of you and be your Lord, He'll do it.